should pray before our podcast. It's beautiful. So, thanks, Val. Thanks, Valerie. So let's uh, let's say a prayer. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let's come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill the space, fill the studio, fill our hearts with your love, with your wisdom. Help us to preach your word, to proclaim your truth, and hopefully to have a lot of fun doing that as we uh, look into this topic of holiness, um, and more importantly, as we help ourselves and others who listen to this podcast to grow in holiness and to see you, Lord Jesus, as the way, the truth, and the life. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. She also told me to look at the camera when I'm talking. So I'm sorry, dear listener. Beeline. But I'm looking at you, I look, think. Look or into you their that... soul. <laughs> <laughs> look right into the soul of the listener. Unless Holy they're listening God. to the audio version, then we're okay. going to talk to your soul. <laughs> it's getting really weird. Let's just play the song. Speaking of the soul, uh... Souls are meant to be holy. We're called to be holy. Holiness. Universe call of holiness. Paul, who's the holiest person you've ever met? In person, not... You are... I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know that was a joke. <laughs> I know that was a joke. Oh, man. Oh, gee whiz. The holiest person that I know. Um, I would say that, like, no, intimately, or just kind of have met and been around. So those go, are two different Let's go questions. intimately. No, intimately. Um, wow, I think maybe, now this is kind of cheesy, but in a very real way, my mother. Nice, good. Hi, Tell us why. Is um, she a listener? Does no. Mama Maneric listen to the podcast? No, she's too holy for this show. <laughs> Heathens talking about the faith. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, she she tries to listen. All right. She so tell us about Mama Maneric. Uh She's just, she's one of those people that everyone just adores, right? Like people meet her and they're like, oh, she's just a wonderful person. Mm. And she does that without compromising her devotion to the faith. Mm. Um, she prays regularly. She leads others to Christ. She's one of the most Christ-like people I know as far as her willingness to self, to just deny herself. I mean, she's married to my dad. Mm. That's amazingly self-sacrificial. <laughs> <laughs> she raised me and six of, all six of my siblings. So, I don't know. I, I do love uh, the way that my mom just exudes self-denial. I think it's beautiful, and I think it's incredibly... That is, to me, like... I, I know that Bishop Barron has had, uh, you know, many different kind of talking points, but in the beginning, I think when you were in seminary with him, uh, he was on that the strangest way, those three mm -hmm. things, and one of those, the one that I always found resonating was, your life is not about you. As a Christian, your life is not about you, and that's cool. And that's my mom. I mean, she's just always giving. Always that's giving. beautiful. How about you? Holiest person. Yeah, you know, as given my job, I have a privilege of meeting a lot of really holy people. And um, for me, I, I would have to say one of my professors in the seminary, Father Larry Hennessy, he's probably the holiest man I know. He's uh, Now he's retired. I think he still teaches every now and then up at the seminary. But he's just... I, you just he's, he's got one of those people that there's just you just feel the presence of the holy spirit mm. when you're in their presence and that's him so like i know him intimately enough in that um like we've chatted we've had i lived with him for four years at the seminary um so we've gotten to know each other fairly well uh but just when you're when you're in his presence you just feel the presence of of god um, it's just it's just a an experiential thing. Um, they just have it, and yeah. like you said, you just you talk to them, and they're just at a different level yeah. of of in tuneness. That's not a word, but just harmony maybe with the Trinity. 
Yeah. And it's, it is a remarkable thing when you meet people like that. I get the sense that I would, if I would ever have the privilege of meeting Dr. Peter Kraft, I feel mm. like any time you listen to that man talk, it's just, there is a, just a beauty to yeah. everything he says in a piece. Like, I get worked up and I get, a, and like, you never hear that from these people, right? Like right. They, they, there's just a calmness. There's calm, just a, a calmness to yeah. them. Yeah. It's awesome. It's awesome to see it in people. Yeah. Holiness. Holiness. Sanctitude. We, uh, yeah. Sanctitude, which comes from the word sanctus, which holy, means holy. holy. We say holy, holy, but it... We're all meant to, to grow in holiness. We all have... We all have the one vocation to be holy, as God is holy. And we never really, I mean, this has certainly been true forever, because um, our Jewish brothers and sisters knew, understood this, um, but we never really had any like official church teaching on this universal call to holiness until the Second Vatican Council. And Lumen Gentium, which is one of the documents of the Second Vatican Council, that's where the church actually starts discussing the universal call to holiness um, and defines it as a vocation, something we're all called to, regardless of your other vocations, right? Whether you're married, a priest, religious, a lay, a consecrated person, or just in the single life, whether you're a teacher, doctor, um, Whatever, everybody is called to be holy. Great, we got one job. We're put here to do one thing, and that's to one thing, and that's to get to heaven. And you have to be holy to get to heaven. That's right. And and it was there. It, like yes, Vatican II formalized this kind of concept, but it was there at the beginning. Always of the church, there at the infancy, right? Like even in the, before Christ. Yeah. But well, before Christ was incarnate. But yeah, Christ always was. So the uh, good, good catch. See. You're still See? safe for canonization. There was no heresy. <laughs> no heresy there. All of you <laughs> studying these later on during this cause, yes. you got more to worry about than that. Another 90 years from now, God willing. <laughs> so, but St. Paul, right, he talks about God's holy people. When he, when he writes his letters, he addresses regularly to, to the holy people, the people of God. St. Peter calls us a holy nation, a chosen people. There's this idea of holiness built into the church from the beginning, and that we're all expected, that's the expectation from Saints Peter and Paul, is that we will be a holy people, each one of us individually, and then collectively as the church itself. So it, it's there from the beginning. Lumen Gentium means the light of the nations. Light of the nations. Light of the nations. Um, light of all peoples. Um, that's, that's, uh, that's where it comes from. And, and it, it's beautiful to think about our unique call, personal, but then the call that we all share together because that means that we can help each other, mm -hmm. right? We're, we're, I'm not just here to get myself in heaven. Yes, I am. That's my number one job. But by doing my job, I will enable God to use my journey to him to draw others to him. That's, right. That's also where the other vocations come from, right? Yeah. Me, I'm called to get this entire parish. The Lord has put me... Uh, in as shepherd to get all these people to grow in holiness, which is why we have a podcast, <laughs> uh, to help me in this. Um, and so, yeah, our particular vocations continue in that. But we do have to, it begins with the self, right? We have to work on ourselves and our own growth in holiness. Yeah, I love, I love the line from Augustine. I think we've talked about it before. This is the most, I think it's his most famous line, right, from the Confessions. Like, thou hast made us for thyself, O Lord, mm -hmm. And our heart is restless until it rests in thee. And that's just, that captures it, right? Yeah. Like, so, not only are we made and called for holiness, we are not at peace until we find it. So it's at, it, like... That restlessness stays, yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's literally what we're made for. We are designed, we are oriented towards it. At the end of the day, that's, that's really what holiness is. If you ask, like, what is holiness? I mean, we, we, we talked about moms and priests and other people in our lives, grandma, you know, uh, the little old ladies at Mass. All of them are holy, but, like, those, that's what it looks like. But, excuse me, holiness is um, a union with God. That's, that's what to be holy is, to be in union with the Blessed Trinity. And so the, the, as we grow in holiness, 
we, we grow closer in union with the Blessed Trinity. So when you think of the holiest people, they're just so close and intimate in their relationship with the Trinity, with the Father, Son, and Spirit, that now they, they have that, that presence about them, that sac self-sacrificialness. Um, they You look at them and hopefully we don't necessarily see them, but we see Christ in them. That's that's holiness. Yeah, and it goes back it goes back to what we were talking about when we said what are who are the most holy people you know? That idea of restlessness is so often the last thing you would use. It's the last a restless person is the last person the adjective you'd use mm -hmm. to describe these people that you know. Like you're the priest at the seminary or my mom or Dr. Peter Crave. Like mm -hmm. no one would call these people restless. No, right? yeah. They just seem so restful. Full, not in a lazy way, but in a way like I am resting in the place I'm meant to be, yeah. and I'm cool with that, and that's awesome. And of course, there's no greater person to look for than our Blessed Mother in Mama Mary holiness, right? Like she and she. She is the perfect model, the perfect model of holiness. And you really like I love the Angelus. I mm -hmm. will regularly, not every day. I've I got to get back in the habit of this. Set an alarm for noon. And say that, Angelus. It's awesome. We have the kids do in our school. Yep. Noon, yeah. Every day at noon. Every day. The kids in our school, they learn the Angelus. But it's it's a perfect meditation on what it means to achieve holiness, right? Um, it's just, it walks through, for those of you who don't know the Angelus, look it up. It's a great prayer. It's a beautiful prayer. And it takes, what, maybe a minute? A minute not and a half? Even, yeah. Maybe not even. You say a few Hail Marys. You say this prayer. It's awesome. Right in the middle of the day. We've talked about it before. But it's gorgeous because of the language, the moment. It's the moment of Mary's yes. It is the Annunciation. It is Mary's yes. It is the Incarnation. The Incarnation. Um, and uh, it's, it's awesome. But what is, who is Mary? She calls herself the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me. It's that acceptance. That, there's that restfulness, right? Like, look, I know that I've got my plans, but I know there's a bigger plan out there. My life isn't about me. And Lord, what your plan is, I am your handmaid. I am your hand. I'm your servant. Let it be done unto me according to Thy word. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. And and but everything about Mary is will point us towards holiness. So you know, keeping Mary in mind, how can we, who are very far from holy, <laughs> how can we and our listeners grow in holiness? Where do we begin? Where do we begin? Well, obviously, so. Let's let's we started this podcast off with prayer. Prayer, and that's I think that's to to grow in holiness. You've got to have that conversation with God on a daily basis. On a regular daily, basis. daily prayer is necessary for anyone who's going to grow in holiness and be a saint. And so and th there are so many different ways to pray. I think there, yeah, there's no wrong way as long as your prayer is directed to the Blessed Trinity. There's no wrong way to pray. When you start praying to other things and other gods, and then, then you're in trouble. But a rosary, a daily rosary, that takes like 15 minutes, 20 minutes tops. Get a daily rosary in. I can, I can. Both of those look directly at Our Lady and, and call on her intercession, which we talked about in our last podcast. Um, call on her intercession to help us grow in holiness, to grow in union with her son. I can do, I can do a rosary like 11 11 oh, minutes? Yeah, it's fast. What do you say? Hail Mary, Hail Mary. Hail no, Mary, no. Mary. I say the whole prayer. I say it. It's just very fast. Oh, my goodness. An 11-minute rosary. Yeah, you could have done That's it. like saying I run a three-minute mile. No, it's not, because it's true. <laughs> I actually do it. <laughs> you do not pray the rosary in 11 minutes. I... You pray it well? I... Uh, I mean, yes, I pray it. I Same think I pray it too fast, and I get to about 15, 16 minutes. Look, it's not a... Fine, you win, holy man. With your 15 minutes. Neither of us should try to get it through quickly, though. No, no, no. I, and that's not, the point isn't to get it through quickly, but the point is that it, you, as you're saying this prayer, because it's so familiar to you, the words, you don't have to meditate on the prayer. You meditate on what that decade of the rosary is about. And the prayers just kind of will call you when your mind inevitably wanders, or at least mine does. I'm not very good at that. So, um, but it, it, rosary's great. Morning offering. Morning offering for another great um, and short prayer short for the beginning prayer of the day. Before you even wake up, you know, uh, say that. That would be a good way to do it. Like, really frame your day. And then also the kind of Ignatius 
uh, his, his examine. Just a quick thing at the end of the night. Look up the examine prayer. It's short, oh. sweet, simple, easy to do at night. You want to grow in holiness? Review your day every night. It's and an examination. Account, even if you don't want to do Ignatius's examine, which is short and it's it's nice. But yeah, an examination of conscience every day just looks at not only where you've sinned and where you failed, but also look at where did I see God today? Where did I encounter the risen Jesus? Who did I encounter the risen Jesus in? And then that immediately leads to a, a, a very sincere prayer of thanksgiving. Like, you know what, this, like now that overall I probably would have said this was a terrible day, but now that I actually think about it and... You know, I saw Christ in my coworker who brought me a cup of coffee, and I, I saw Christ in the grocery store at the clerk that, that smiled at me as I was you know, doing whatever. Did you, did you see Christ in, in me, Father Dal? Every day. Yes. Well, almost every day. Yes. <laughs> oh. But then, like, your bad day instantly turns in like, wow, no, I actually, you know, today may not have been all that bad of a day. I think it's huge. Know. And then, sure, yeah, I cut that guy off and I flipped that person off. But And I'm sorry for those things, Lord. And now here's my act of contrition that I'm, I'm truly sorry for those things. But, you know, and overall, like, yeah, I, I also saw Jesus today. Right, I think there's both. Right? That's a beautiful thing. It's really important to do both. Like, you yeah. need to say, where did I fall short? Because if you don't ever look at where you fall, fell short, you I'll won't... i off a guy tomorrow, too. You know? Yeah, you won't you know where to go myself. to grow. If that's the growth. Catch yourself before you wreck yourself. Look at this. He's just dropping rain and wisdom. Um, but, then, my rhymes. but then the other thing is to be grateful, right? There's so many blessings, and sometimes we, we can't just hyper-focus on our failings. We also have to, hyper, to, to focus and to be grateful for all the blessings because we don't want to sit there and, and go to bed at the end of every day like, oh, what a failure of a day this was. And that's the restlessness, Yeah. right? That's the restlessness. And yeah, to be grateful and to be grateful to God because that's where all those blessings flow from. And I love the prayer that you started off with today. Come, Holy Spirit. Come it's such Holy a Spirit. simple prayer. Dear listener, this is a great way. Whenever you are feeling restless, whenever you're feeling worried, invite, literally invite the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit and mean it. If you say it and you didn't mean it, be like, nope, redo it. Say it again. Come, Holy Spirit. Close your eyes. I know, Father, I forget, uh, with, with uh, our students, you had them practice this at one Mass just literally sitting there with their eyes closed, repeating the invitation for the Holy Spirit to come into our hearts and calm us. And it is powerful. But to read the scriptures, um, start with the Gospels, especially the Gospel of Mark, and read it. You know, St. Jerome famously said, ignorance of the scriptures is ignorance of Christ. We, we know who God is by reading about him in the scriptures. And so, you know, whether that's, if you really don't want us, if, if opening the Bible, even just to the Gospel of Mark, is too overwhelming for you, then start praying with the readings before you go to Mass. And you can find those online, the usccb.org, the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. Go to usccb.org, and they have the daily readings every day on the homepage. And then you can, there's a calendar, and then you can go to the upcoming Sunday if you're not going to daily Mass. Look up the readings for the upcoming Sunday and read those throughout the week. You know, there's got to be three. The first reading, the second reading, the gospel. Pick three days that week to read through each reading one day. And then you'll be going to Mass on Sunday with your family, ready to hear the word. And you'll be more engaged at Mass. Um, and you'll start to know who God is a bit better by opening the scriptures. Right. You want to get holy. If we said holiness is that union with God... It, we're lucky God was like, oh, you don't know how to be like me? I'm going to become a human and show you what it means to be like Amen. me. So we have that in the gospel. So holiness, definitely. Got to, got to read the scriptures. Read it. Grow in holiness, friends. Oh. That's our universal call. We all have that vocation. It's beautiful. I'm Father Dominic. I'm Paul Maneric. And this is Ed Talks, where we hope to inspire saints who will inspire saints to build the kingdom of God. Amen.